this lecture we're going to discuss some of the properties associated with transition metals these are the metals that are located uh, between uh, group 13 which is uh, also referred to as group 3 and group 2 so it's it's a block of elements between group 2 and group 13 which i've marked in red over here which contain uh, some very common everyday metals that you use uh, you have iron you have uh, chromium you have cobalt you have copper you have zinc uh, gold uh, is also there, silver is there. So these are some of the common everyday metals that you see every, uh, around you. Now we're going to discuss some of the properties associated with these uh, metals. The number one property that is associated with these metals is that they they have high melting and boiling points. Boiling points and this is in comparison to other metals so group one group two metals uh, have relatively low melting and boiling points transition metals on the other hand have very high melting and boiling points the second property associated with transition metals is that they also have very very high densities and the reason why they have a very high density is that if you look at the atomic masses the atomic masses are generally greater compared to group 1 and group 2 so so they have more mass and you can pack more of them in a smaller unit volume so which is why density which is mass over volume which is why density is always higher for transition metals and some of the metals can be very very high for example for example uh, lead and gold are very heavy so some of these metals are extremely heavy uh, because they have very very high densities i'm going to explain uh, these two points high melting boiling points and uh, high density by giving you examples of two giant metallic lattices one is for normal metals group one and group two which are low density so this is for for a normal metal or normal would not be a very good word let's call this group one group two metal and this is uh, the structure the metallic lattice for a transition metal now it's a it's a it's a giant metallic lattice what that means is that it ha it's a it's positive metal lines because metals like to lose electrons in a sea of free moving delocalized electrons which are which would be conducting electricity and heat very well so you have these two giant metallic lattices. Now one thing that you're going to notice is the transition metal uh, ions or the size of the ion is very, very small. So you're going to pack more transition metal ions in a smaller space. But for group one, group two metals, the size of the ion is uh, slightly larger compared to transition metals. So you're not going to uh, be packing too many ions in a giant metallic lattice. And the other thing is that the delocalized electrons and uh, the positive ions are far apart the 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 larger distances um, between this electron over here and the positive ion over there compared to transition metals because they're more tightly packed together so the closer they are the stronger would would be the force of attraction which is why they're going to have higher melting and boiling points and the reason why they're going to have higher density is because you're more packing more mass into a tinier space because transition metals have smaller ions the third point that we will discuss is that transition metal compounds so the compounds are usually normally they are colored and when they dissolve in water if they dissolve in water so soluble compounds Uh, form colored solutions so that is specifically for transition metal compounds and some of the compounds and some of the examples that you must remember what the color is for example uh, CU2 plus is very often any compound containing CU2 plus that is very likely to have a it's going to form blue solution so any solution uh, containing copper 2 plus ion it's very likely to have a blue solution 
Similarly, any any solution that has uh, Fe two plus in it, it's going to be it's going to be a green solution. So I'm going to I'm going I'm only uh, mentioning those compounds that are very frequently used in Cambridge examination. So then we have Fe three plus. Fe three plus is it's either dirty red in solution or you can also use the word red brown to describe a solution which has Fe three plus ions in it. So these are very frequently used uh, compounds. Then there are other compounds uh, which which you're going to be. Uh, very frequently using and seeing in examination. So, for example, Mn2 plus. If you have uh, manganese ions, this uh, color and solution is going to be pink. And remember, I'm talking about compounds that contain Mn2 plus ions. Similarly, you have uh, cobalt, cobalt 2 plus. Like for example, cobalt chloride. That's also that's also pink in color when it is in solution. Uh, then you have Cr3 plus, chromium. CR3 plus is green in color. You're going to learn about their colors when you talk about re oxidation and reduction later on. Uh, then you have another ion which is uh, CR207. 2 minus and that color is orange. That is uh, an oxidizing agent that would be frequently used. Then you have another another ion that is that would be frequently used in oxidation that's magnate ion and permagnet ions and this is purple in color and other commonly used compounds we can uh, also add nickel to the list uh, nickel is uh, when it is in solution when it's part of a compound and dissolved in water it's also green in color both property of transition metals is that they are extremely good catalysts. Their compounds are also used as catalysts and uh, so they have very good catalytic properties. What do catalysts do? They speed up. They speed up a chemical reaction. And the way that they speed up the chemical reaction is that they provide an alternate path for the reaction to occur which which has which has a lower activation energy. So in a way, they indi indirectly lower the activation energy or the energy required to start a reaction. So they increase the amount of effective collisions that are taking place. And another uh, point about catalysts is that they remain unchanged during the entire process. They will participate in the reaction, but the, at the end of the day, they're not going to get used up. So they're very, very good catalysts. Uh, so I'm going to uh, give you a few examples of very good catalysts that are used frequently in industry. So for the first one is iron or iron oxide, Fe2O3. This is used in the Haber's process. Now the Haber process is where ammonia is manufactured, it's produced. So that's one example. Then you have another example of vanadium pentaoxide or V2O5. Now vanadium, vanadium pen, pentaoxide is used in the contact process where so it's used in the contact process where sulfuric acid H2SO4 which is uh, then used for making fertilizers and used in lead acid batteries. So sulfuric acid is produced. Then you have uh, another catalyst which is uh, which you're going to study in all levels that's uh, nickel and that's used in hydrogenation or you can call it the manufacture of margarine so so it's uh, it's used to produce it's used to produce margarine in in uh, in the chemical industry the last property of transition metals is that they have variable oxidation states. 
What that means is that they can have variable charges, for example, and the reason why they can have variable charges is because they can lose electrons, they have a large number of electrons in their outer shells, so they can lose a, uh, more than one, they, so they can lose variable number of electrons, they can either lose one electron or two electrons or three electrons, so be just because they have a very large number of electrons in their outer shell. So for example, uh, you're very often going to see uh, transition metals written like this in brackets a roman numeral would be written that would indicate what the charge on this is for example if if uh, if somebody tells you that there is an iron one compound that would mean that fe has a charge of one plus similarly if uh, somebody says that iron there's something called iron two or it's written like this that would mean that if he has a charge of two plus so every time whenever you mention compounds uh, related to transition metals you're going to mention the charge as well and the reason the charge is important because they can have variable charges for example group one had always had plus one charges group two always had a plus two charge they always lost two electrons group three is going to have a plus three charge but transition metals their charges would vary so uh, for example if they if if a compound is written like this if it's if it says it's potassium per magnate per magnate seven so they're going to tell you what the oxidation state or charge on the transition metal ion is for example the formula of this compound is kmno4 and over here mag magnes has a charge of plus seven so uh or for example if they've written there's a compound called iron 3 oxide what that would mean is that iron has a charge of 3 plus oxygen has a charge of minus 2 so so it's going to be it's going to be the formula of this compound is going to be Fe2O3 so so the charge or the oxidation state of transition metals is always mentioned along uh, whenever you write or spell the name of the compound